At the time we were just bartenders so we didn't really have a lot of money to do this. This is an absolute savior for the storage space problem that we had. Waking up here is just magical. Even in the tough times you look back and think, oh my gosh, I learned so much. Hi, I'm Taylor. And I'm Teddy. Come take a tour with you. All right, welcome to the kitchen. This is one of my favorite places in this house. I think the way it turned out, the layout, everything worked so well. It's basically a galley kitchen. There's a little overhang here that gives us extra counter space. When we moved into this space, we actually increased the amount of counter space that we had, the amount of cabinets that we had, and the ability to eat in. My wife's favorite is this deep sink. I think I actually ordered a split sink and I'm so happy that I went with a big deep sink because that became, you know, everything for this kitchen. This is the sink. Here, you know, we wash vegetables and all that kind of stuff. This propane stove was actually our first gas stove. That makes a huge difference when we cook. I mean, beforehand we had, you know, Teflon pans on a little heater and we moved on to Dutch ovens and cast iron to cook with gas. I mean, it was just an upgrade to our cooking ability. Another thing that really improved our cooking ability, especially if you know any kind of cast iron cooking, to the point was the exhaust vent. This before we even had any kind of air conditioning unit, it became what I call an air exchanger. So it would be, you know, at night you open a window in the bedroom and you put these things up high and it sucks all the cold air from outside into our bedroom and it's like, you know, it was a creative way to cool ourselves down, you know, until we ended up with the air conditioning system. The fridge that we have is like the size of an apartment. So I wouldn't say it's super small by any means. We were definitely able to, you know, go to the store and live here and not have to run out every day for, you know, at least five days. We went out to do a big grocery run. As far as the layout, you know, we wanted to keep it somewhat open with our dishes and food storage and just kind of combine all that, you know, a little bit for decoration and a little bit functional and I think it looks really nice. This pantry is small, but we had a system for everything. We have a drawer that was like for we had a drawer that was for cans and then we had a drawer that was for breads and snacks and tortillas and all that kind of stuff. All the storage products and this one up top is just for silverware. So yeah, this space that's here has a window here and a window here and then a skylight up top. It gives you an open feeling even though I'm in a very tight space. This is a nice view right now. But in the winter it's a mountain view so I have a view of the top of the mountain from here while I'm cooking and then if I'm washing dishes or doing something and here I have a beautiful view of the woods from here. I love the feeling of privacy and seclusion that you feel in the kitchen, honestly, everywhere in this house. We just paid as we went. We had 5,000 saved up and we went to Hitch's Blues and Bernardsville. Barsville, yeah, and I remember him telling me half of it. Now half of it when it's finished and we were like, okay, that's great. At the time we were just bartenders so we didn't really have a lot of money to do this. We saved a lot of money by not paying labor, but it was a three year long process of paying as you go. So as far as coming up with a number, I mean, yeah, I never don't think we kept all the receipts, but I think when we go back and look, I think we put about 65,000 into the house. Yeah, and then the land was 65 as well. And we only paid a mortgage on the land. Paying 550 a month for a couple is unheard of right now. Welcome to the living room. This is a 9 foot by 8 foot living room which is definitely the smallest living room we've ever had or I've ever had, but we built a lot of features into it. I mean, everybody's centerpiece in a living room is usually a couch and this is, I mean, the biggest couch you can ever have in here. Every day that we would sit around and watch TV, it was the three of us, me, Teddy, and Molly, like we were so good at cuddling as a group, that we could all just settle on this couch and, you know, relax and watch TV. The next thing that was probably used the most in the living room as far as entertainment was our projector. 
We have this little nebula capsule projector that is super small and super useful. Our projector screen we have is 100 wide and the picture we get is probably 70. So, it's a 70 TV, in fact it's the biggest TV I've ever had. The Mr. Cool unit that we have is amazing for cooling, heating, saving money on energy, super easy to use and all that. But that was a later addition to our tiny house. So, the two winners that we had, the little 5k wood stove, this was our only real heating unit for the house. Yeah, I mean, it's great. We live in the woods and we basically have endless energy that we're creating on this property. It's a free resource for us or at least a circular resource for us on the property. The scabbards here are removed. This is an absolute savior for the storage space problem that we had. So, our kitchen is raised 2 feet. This main living space is 11 feet and up, but we have 2 foot 8 by 8 storage space underneath the kitchen and it's absolutely necessary when you're working with that much square footage to be able to have a modular storage space where you can pull things out when you need them, but keep everything, you know, dry and humidity controlled. Under there we have like a manifold, like a water manifold. So our water intake comes in through there goes to a whole house filtration system and then it goes to the water manifold that separates the hot and cold water to the kitchen, bathroom and outside and it's called a Hanrong setup, which, like everything, has its own line from the manifold. And then we have a propane water heater that lives underneath and vents to the outside and we used as much propane as we could to keep a low electric threshold. Er, we. Probably looked at over 10 properties and being here in North Carolina you're not going to get anything flat, especially something that we can afford. We found that open use zoning was our best option. Oh, and we got lucky and found a property that originally had two single wide trailers on it, but we were able to use the well, just get a new pump and then we were able to use the septic tanks, just clean them out, recondition them and trench all the way to the house. So if this one was easier to see just because there have been houses here before, you know, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see how it's going to sit on raw land. And this one, you know, wasn't easy. It took us a long time to clean everything up. There was a lot of trash on the property. It took a long time to clean it up, but at least it looked like you could believe it. Or if this is where the driveway is going to be and this is where we're going to put the house and things like that. Oh, it was a little bit better. Very nice, now we're in the bathroom space. We have a washer and dryer combo unit. It's worked out great for us for the past. I mean, almost 5 years. It was a sink on top of a washer and dryer and then our shower behind it. It was a lot of setup that Taylor did very long ago. We have our waterfall shower which was a must have and I'm so happy we got it. We were very lucky with the land we bought. It came with two septic tanks on the property. They needed some work done to them but we got them back up and running and we weren't quite sure what kind of toilet we were looking for, or compost or incinerator. But how did we buy the land while we were still putting the finishing touches on it? We went with a regular bathroom and it's been great. We have a sliding door with two mirrors on either side so lots of light comes in with a box, full length mirror. I've never really had a problem getting ready here in the mornings. Then, we're in the love bedroom. This is my favorite place in the house. Waking up here is just magical. This was also our workspace. We have the kitchen here but when it was in use it was really nice to have this little extra desk area. This is our little tree house. And yes, I love falling asleep under the stars, waking up and immediately knowing where you are in the seasons thanks to the trees and the leaves. It was just the magical, whimsical feel that I really wanted in my home. So, now we're in our backyard, in the fire pit area that we did in the beginning, 
we got what we had on the property. In the end we really needed some storage so we built a 6 foot 1 and somehow we still need more wood storage. Ah uh, we built a pretty big fire pit, but this has been a great added extension to our living room. I like the way we did our own thing, but maybe, you know, flexible. Yeah, but that there we go. That's a word of wisdom. Yeah, it's hard because everyone's going to have a different situation, a different type of schedule, like general advice to give someone. I feel like it's not going to be easy. There were a lot of times where you just wanted to cry and wonder if this was the right thing to do. It's worth it. All the hard work, all the learning, even in the tough times, you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I learned so much. All hard work pays off. Quote, it's okay. Well, thanks for taking a tiny house tour with us. Bye.